YouTube, Troy at the full setup here and I'm back with another unboxing today and today I'm going to unbox the Asus A60HM Plus motherboard. This is an AMD FM2 Plus motherboard. Um, now this is in the series of the ongoing case build, anybody that's been watching my custom case, uh, thanks for all the subscriptions and if you haven't subscribed and want to see all the videos, please go along and have a look. Now um, I was originally... Um, going to look at doing like an i5-6400 with the base clock overclock but Intel have uh, recently announced that they're going to stop that and um, that they don't want people overclocking their non-K processors because they're money grabbing whores. Anyway, this build that I've been doing, it's been more about the case mod and we've got an AMD 5350 in there, um, like the cheapest AMD processor going really. Um, and I've been able to get some quite good gaming videos, so again, go have a look at them, and it's been quite a fun build, but I think it's time time for a bit more, so that's why I've gone with this. Um, originally looking at an 860K, um, but this week they um, AMD have come out and said that um, there was like a 745 coming out, um, an 845 processor, and they're kind of adjusting some of that A10, A10 range down to the um, 65 uh, TDP rather than 95, and I thought, oh, I remember seeing an SKU for the AMD uh, 88K a few months ago is it coming out I've um, looked on a few websites it's already listed so I'm just waiting for the stock so I'm gonna give it a month or so um, and probably do the 88k at 4 gigahertz anyway that's why I bought this motherboard um, that's everywhere we're going with the channel so what you want to see now is the unboxing all right, let's start with just showing you around the box then. So we've got the Asus logo up here. We've got A60 HM Plus. Um, this is a micro ATX motherboard. It retails up to £55 in the UK, but I want it on eBay for 36 So I'm quite happy with that with delivery as well, even better. Um, then we've got the standard Asus 5 times protection, the 1,000 plus compatible devices and 7,000 plus validation hours. I don't think I'm ever going to keep a computer for that long, but it's good to know. Um, it's the FM2 Plus, which means we're going to get extra features like PCI Express 3.0. It's running on the A60H. Uh, A68H chipset um, and it's saying it's A10 compatible that I'm going to go for the Athlon processors that don't have the uh, graphics built into them and going to use my own card um, and then AMP 200, 2400 ready, Windows 8.1 and HDMI, just a few little bits but um, they are already drivers for Windows 10 anyway side of the box not a lot going on here we've got a photo of the motherboard showing you all the slots and then just the general specifications as well. But I'm going to take you through that when I look um when we have a look at the board in a second. Um, again about the protection, the um, fast USB 3.0, um, Asus Fan Expert, all about that stuff. I do quite like using that. Um, Media Acclaim UFEI BIOS as well. And then audio that roars as well. It's got LED um, shielded, so they've shielded the audio away. But I'm probably still going to use my sound card, but I'll give it a go. See what it's like. Right, let's open the box. So we go. Typical motherboard packaging. Nothing too much fancy going on there at this price. We have the main board in there, but I'm going to put that to one side. I just want to see what else we get in the box. So I'm going to take you all through the motherboard in a second. So there is normally in here. Let's have a look. Yes, there are. Standard that you get with Asus motherboards, you get two um, SATA 3 6 gigabytes per second cables. You get a straight through one. I know, one with a straight and a right angled. And then just a straight through one as well with the white and black ends on them, which I quite like because my PC's in white and black. Oh, isn't that good? It's not the only reason I bought it. I just like Asus motherboards. So I think they're wicked. What else we got in here? Um, there is the rear I.O. shield. I'm going to spray this white before I put this in the new system. Like I said, I'm going to put it in a month. Um, what do you mean you're spraying it white? Well, if you don't know about my painting, you need to go over my channel and have a look. Um, then we have a user guide as well, which would be um, useful and stuff for a lot of people. Um, I tend not to use it, only if I um, get the uh, power pins mixed up and stuff like that. If I can't read it, that's the only time I go into manual. But if you need to compute in, that would be very useful for you. Um, then we've got some warranty stuff and you know extra just you know trees let's just cut down trees for no reason there we go and then we've got the for the a58 and a60 h this is the um software that you need to use and i did have a look online as well and i think you're probably going to need to run this first because they don't seem to have um all of the utilities on their drivers and stuff on their website so make sure you keep hold of that disc Okay, let's have a look at this motherboard. You may wonder that this looks very much like the A58 and A60HK, and it is very similar, and I'll show you why it's different in a second, but here we go. Comes in your nice static thing. Always recommend a strap as well. And here is the motherboard as well. That's like a brownie black finish. 
got a gold chip set on the bottom. Anyway, that's not all you're going to see of the board. I'm going to take you in for a closer look and try and show you everything that's on it. Before I show you all the internal connectors, I'm just going to show you the uh, rear I.O., everything that we have. Um, and let's start at the start from here. So we've got the uh, old school mouse and keyboard connectors, if any of you are still using them. Um, I think I might be, because you can see we've only got four USBs here. Um, and then we've got the HDMI. VGA and DVI, two USB 3.0s, two USB 2.0s, really would have been good to see some more USBs on this. Um, then we have the Gigabyte Ethernet and your rear audio jacks as well. So yeah, I think I'm going to get USB connectors for these bits, maybe. So, best way I can show you this motherboard with the angle we're at. Can I get you in closer? So I thought I'd show you sort of half of the board at the time because then we can just sort of see everything a bit closer. We can see all the different ports and stuff. And I've got the strap as well, so I'm not really too worried about giving it any ESD. So at the top here, we have the um, four pin ATX 12 volt. Um, don't worry if you've got eight pin, you can still run that as well. So don't get confused about that. And then we have all the um, five kilowatt hour caps as well. Um, the the Zeus is uh, they're really good, these capacitors and stuff as well. Would it be nice to see here some sort of um, be in the plus range, maybe some more gold on it as well. Uh, maybe a bit of a heat sink. Um, up at the top here, we have the CPU fan and the chassis fan. So it only gives you two connectors. Um, as you've already seen on my system, I've got three fans. And what I've got is I've got a um, three fan splitter, but it's only got one sending the PWM signal. Here we have the uh, where you'll put your processor FM2, whether you're going to go for the sort of A10 range with built-in graphics. But I really do recommend um, that you don't do that, even if it means you've got to buy a cheap, 20 pound graphics cards go in here for a bit and go straight out and buy the Athlon range because you get a lot better performance. The only way you get really good performance out of those A10s is by disabling the graphics anyway. So I would save yourself some money there. Um, what else have we got up here as well? We've got the two RAM slots as well. Um, so it takes up to 32 gigabyte um, in DDR3 RAM um, at 2400 megahertz. But getting that to play ball with an overclock, it might be quite hard. So again, yeah, start with maybe 2100 megahertz when you overclock and you might have to drop down to 1800s. Here we've got the 24 pin power as well. And then we've just got like the Asus logo, Fan Expert, USB 3 boost, all that sort of stuff. So not too many ports up the top here. What we more want to look at is the bottom of the board this is where everything's going which i'm happy with because on my um it pretty much looks the same as this as well my uh, asus motherboard go have a look at it i've got for the 5350 and i've got some inputs here for like my fans and my usb3 and they come over the top of my graphics card so it's going to really look a lot better for cable clutter so let's start with um as i said earlier we've got a pci um PC, uh, PCI Express 16, um, that's PCI Express 3 um, as well, time 16 for your graphics card, that's the advantage you get over having the FM2 uh, processors, um, FM2 Plus over the uh, old FX series. Then we have a PCI um, slot here by one and a PCI Express slot by one here and then another PCI here. Really would have liked to have seen um, them just put this down the bottom, maybe my other motherboard's just got two, two of these uh, PCI Express because I can't really find a use for the PCI by the bottom but I, did, I wouldn't mind a sound card here, um, a bit of a better one as well because we don't get so many using the PCI standard. Then we have the CMOS battery as well down at the bottom and then we have the um, A68H uh, chipset as well under this nice bit of gold. Was considering spraying it white but my graphics card's going to block it so I won't do it. Now here, here is where I said earlier there's a difference between this, um, the, the Plus and the K series and it's just basically from what I can see so far without um, looking into the software side of it, it is the SATA ports. You only have one um, which is this out, uh, output and the other three are down here. This is really useful to me because these basically SATA ports line straight up where my cable's hiding as well. So that's why I'm going to have two right, ang you know, the right angle going out of there. So again, really good for the cable clutter. So maybe I should start from here and go around. Let's have a look at what we've got. So we have the um, speaker input as well. And then here is all your front panel for your power. We've got another two SATA with these giving us four total SATA six gigabytes a second. Um, as well so that's good that's definitely not great because i've only got two at the moment so that's doing my head in then down here we have um your two usb headers so we can add another four usb ports um in total so that can give us eight usb 2.0s and then a usb uh 3.0 as well um over here we have the tpm and then this is the spf uh sp SPDIF, you know digital audio i think that's what's going on here and then over to here we have the com port 
which is um, for putting up all your old serial devices. And then down here we have, I imagine this is going to be the HD audio out because you can see here, here's the shielding for the audio and that emits light as well. So I won't be able to do um, a full review on this board um, for at least probably another month while I wait for the chip. But uh, so far very happy with it. Um, it's, you know, obviously a lot of features for the price. A couple of things, like I said, would have been nice to just see a little bit of uh, heat sink here and maybe another fan connector down here somewhere with it being the plus range. But overall, for £35, you can't complain, and it's definitely an upgrade over what I've got now. It's going to be lots of new features. So if you want to see all that, if you want to see this running with, um, I said an 88K earlier, and an AMD 880K, hopefully if it gets released, um, running some gaming uh, benchmarks and stuff, um, and you compare it to the uh, 5350, please go over to my channel. Oh, almost dropped it and subscribe. Thanks for watching.